From Ride the West Horse Expo in Spokane, Washington, Rainsman presents part 11 of our 13-week series with Sharon Camarillo. This week, Sharon continues her two-part presentation of gymnastic exercises for the barrel horse. We've got two students here with us, and I'm going to introduce Christine Nichols first. Christine, would you ride up, please? I'm in an O-ring snaffle that hangs the bit up off the horse's tongue because this particular horse wants to get behind the bridle and tuck her chin down to her chest. I've also complimented her with the choice of a German martingale and I'm finding that about 80% of the students in a clinic environment are you needing to use the German martingale for the collection necessary to provide your consistency in your performance or your um, uh, efficient collection rate and balance in a turn. Now Christine's little horse was heavy on the front end. This is a six-year-old dash for cashmere. She's off the track. She drug Christine around. She's weak in her ground handling manners and she was difficult for, for Christine to steer. So we put a six bit on her, which still gives her the direct lateral control that a ring snaffle would to rebalance and offer some education. And because she wanted to stay hollow in the back with her head up and her nose out, we complemented it with a loosely adjusted German type martingale. We use a little leather fork that Rainsman makes for us and you can see that it comes through the bit rings and buttonholes back to the reins so we can minutely adjust this design in the German martingale. Christine's doing an excellent job. We also shortened her stirrups up because we want to make sure that when we stand up in the saddle we can see about a three, in three inch or a three fingers distance between our crotch and the saddle so we can ride with weight in the stirrup to create our balance. Christine's stirrups were a little long and it allowed this mare to drop her head, shift her weight forward, and pull Christine out of the saddle. So by shortening her stirrups and bending her knee, it allowed her to push and have a little leverage to keep the mare back to her. But with a bent knee, it also helps soften the rider's pelvis. And the pelvis becomes the shock absorber that absorbs the concussion of the horse's feet as it hits the ground to the upper half of the rider's body. The softer pelvis, the more relaxed and soft your horse will be. So Christine, what I'm going to ask you to do on your nice mare is to go through our serpentine pattern. Okay, forward motion comes from the leg aid of a horse yielding to pressure of both legs squeezed to cue the forward motion. And Christine, you can go ahead and walk if you'd like to, and that's fine. Now, in one of our past demonstrations, we talked about the four zones on the right and the four zones on the left of the horse, and I don't want to confuse you with it, but we need to have an aid to control the horse's neck shoulder, rib, and hip, because straight lines are a very important issue. Very nice, Christine. Okay, straight ahead to the next barrel, and you can see Janice on the fence, and if you'll chin up, eyes forward, now I see her shoulder into the barrel and her hip out. That looks better. Whoa. Now, wait a minute, just a minute. I saw when you rated that she rated shoulder in, hip out. And if we're getting that same rate on a barrel pattern, we're going to teach our horses to drop their shoulders and lose their balance position. So let's back her up straight in the line of your approach. Very nice. Rate her there. Okay, now move her hip over to the right. Just a little. Straight to the... Okay, now move her whole body back over to the left and get her in the area that you... Good. Settle her there. Excellent. So rider has to cue for the turn by squeezing the legs. Forward. Now start the inside rein for the direction and an outside rein to finish. And you're pulling just a little too much inside rein. So let's ride straight across here to me. Chin up, eyes forward. Nice job. I want you to rate. 
Christine, and you'll turn this barrel. Okay, you're, you're okay. Straight across the back side, outside rein, and a little more pressure with your outside leg, Christine. I saw the rib cage push out and it didn't respond to your leg pressure, didn't yield to the pressure. Whoa. Now you missed your rate and look what happened. You rated with an inside rein. Did you feel that? All right. Move the hip over to the right, stop her straight. Now you say, well, what difference is this serpentine pattern off a of cloverleaf pattern? It still can create some anxiety or frustration on a horse, but it does give us the resource now to slow our horse down, not unlike the barrel pattern itself, but it's just another opportunity to work skill drills that'll directly apply to your cloverleaf position. All right, straight ahead to your second cone. Shift your weight, whoa. Start the nose and ride straight to the, last co to the next cone. Start the nose outside rein and straight across into your next barrel on the serpentine. Very nice, chin up, eyes forward. Nice balance in between your hands. Now, did you feel her move in, Christine? You could have picked up a right rein and moved her back onto her line. There you go, good. Release that effort, good. Now, come ahead, start the nose straight. And I see a little too much turn, so let's work through the next set of cones that represent a square on our barrel, just to remind you of your position. Straight ahead, chin up, eyes forward. First cone says, sit and slow down. Squeeze, collect it to the second cone, start the nose. Outside rein, straight. Straight to the last cone, and let's go through that square again. Start the nose, outside rein, straight motion. Start the nose, outside rein, which helps introduce the fact the horse needs a shoulder underneath the horse and not off to the left or right. Very nice, Christine, squeeze forward and right up straight to me. Chin up, watch me. Straight, sit right, close your fingers. Now start the nose, outside rein, good work, and straight ahead. Now very nice, Christine, and I'm going to ask you to go ahead and jog if you would. Down the back side of the fence to the corner of the arena. Chin up, eyes forward. Very nice, you're posting on your correct diagonal. Now I want you to ride over to the little flag on the wall. And I want you to look up and find me. And I'm standing in front of the midline flag on this fence and I want you to ride straight to me at a jog. And we'll introduce a little bit of our serpentine. Good, whoa, sit. Now you're gonna go on a right turn, whoa. Very nice. Back to midline and left. Now you're forcing that issue. You're kind of putting two circles together, aren't you? And I want two teardrops put together. There you go, straight to me. Good job, straight, straight, whoa, sit. You're hurrying though, aren't you? Okay, slower down. So the importance of visualizing a pattern will help you visualize the position on your barrels. Where do I want my horse's feet to go? Utilize the representation of the cones on the barrels or the flags on the fences. Very nice. Whoa, easy, slow down before you start your turn. Start her nose and ride on around. Very nice, Christine. Let's stop her, sit, and reverse. More left leg, you're letting, okay, more left leg, this is this side. And move the left leg pressure back behind the back cinch to control 
your zone four. Move it back. Don't let her come this way. Push. Don't kick. Push. Solid pressure. Now shift your weight back. Pick up your reins. Okay, squeeze. Pull on the left rein just a little more. That a girl, that a girl, that a girl. More left leg. Get that hind end push back around. One step back before we allow her to quit. Shift your weight first. Rebalance. Reposition. Squeeze. Good job. Quit her there. And you want to reward the slightest effort for the first few times. If you get one step back, that's terrific. Tomorrow you'll get three. Pretty soon you'll be backing in a circle. So let's reinforce the reverse because I think so many of us don't realize the importance of the control in a reverse fashion. So first of all, we want to take a thought to rebalance, lay the plan. So neutral position with my hands is toward the top of my saddle horn. Knuckles of my hands to the outside and I've got enough room in between my split reins to be able to use them in any position on either side of the horse. In this position, or in, in the result of, of a reverse, I want equal pressure with the left and right rein. First of all, I want to cue the horse that I'm getting ready to do something. So off of my center of gravity in my balanced body position, that's represented from my heel to my pelvis to my shoulder, I'm going to just shift my shoulders behind the center of gravity. And already she's starting to respond. Now, before I do anything with my rain aids, I want to get her feet moving. So I'm going to squeeze my legs. She says, what? Forward or back? Now I'm going to show her with my reins back. Hold solid. How's her head position? I want her nose up and out just a little bit, so I may have to elevate my hand. She's backing more to the right. A little right rein, move her off my leg pressure. And once she gets rebalanced out, I'll reward the effort. So I want to create a nice, light, responsive reverse. If it's one step, release. If it's three steps, Release, if it's taking the incentive to back in circles or back in figure eights. I want my horse to re reverse as easy as she goes forward. Now look, she's kind of fighting with me in the face. You know why? Her legs are sticking. So now I gotta get a little more responsive with my pelvis and my legs. When you have an issue with the face, it's not the face, it's the feet. You can't steer a horse forward or reverse unless their feet are moving. Always be quick to reward the effort. Hello. Hey, Christine, thank you. All right, next student. Alicia Allendorf, would you go ahead and pick up a jog? So get the idea of the serpentine. And I'm going to put a little more pressure on you in red. Easy, good. Now I want you to utilize some patience in your collection. Don't get your turn before your horse is ready to make it. Straight line and whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, so right straight. Nice job rebalancing with a reverse. All right, now squeeze forward, start the nose. And you can see here that this horse is stepping forward and pushing through the shoulder. So what I'm going to want to do is a little more contact with the outside rein. And instead of lifting it up so much here, Alicia, let's put it down a little lower so we can make sure that the outside rein is pushing the outside shoulder underneath the horse. Also a little more leg pressure to complement that. Now, first cone says slow down. Second cone says start the nose. Good work. And circle again on our nice squared circle. Again for me. And I want you to stay right here, Alicia, because I want to utilize, go ahead, forward motion, this opportunity to correct your balanced body position. 
you have a tendency when your horse isn't moving to lean forward and try to beg him to go. So what I want you to do is visualize sending him forward from the hind end. So you're going to set up straight. You're going to squeeze and drive him forward with your legs. And now I want to keep you right here and I want to work on a really nice square presentation. Elevate the outside rein lightly. Lower the inside rein slightly. Very good. Now it's going to take some pressure with your outside leg to keep the rib cage underneath your horse. And once we get our horses straight, then we can get them strong. And when they're strong, they have a lot of drive from the hind end, which again comes up from the hind feet, through the hip, down the center line of the horse, up the neck to the pole, very nice. Now you can experiment with your hand aids again. If you need to elevate to find that soft spot, go ahead and do it. Whenever we put pressure in one area, we want to release pressure in another. The horse needs to know where we're sending them. So when you put pressure on your outside rein, Alicia, you want to release a little pressure on your inside rein. And it becomes nothing more than opening and closing your hand. Very nice. Chin up, eyes forward. And I want you looking on the ground in this small circle, only about three feet ahead of your horse. And as you leave this position, look up to your next barrel. Now you'll extend your eye position across the pattern. Shorten your range of vision and extend your range of vision. Straight line, sit, whoa, collect. Very nice. Circle again, I didn't like the fact that minutely you lost his shoulder. And I, again, I'm putting more pressure on you because you have the ability to start to identify the weakness. And let's go on to the next position. Extend your angle of vision. Shorten. Whoa. Oh, now did you feel him rated crooked, didn't he? He stepped out behind. So what you needed to do in that case was to stop him, rebalance before you made your turn. So let's turn back around and do that into that last in barrel. Straight, whoa, straight, uh, back him. Now, you can see that in the camera, how he wanted to step out behind. He didn't want to rate straight and strong. So now I want you to back him over onto his line of approach. Very good. Ride him straight up again to your position in your barrel. Sit, whoa. And he dropped out lightly, but not as Obvious, that's better. Straight ahead and stop him again. And let's get him to hold that position, much better. Now, squeeze him forward, get your turn, and straight across over on this side. Now what I'm gonna ask you to do on the serpentine is extend your position in between the sides. So a nice long trot in between and a rate as you come to your barrel, okay? So let's jog around this square just to get our position. Sit down in your saddle, shoulders back, and remember you're driving from the hind end forward. Good. Look up, extend your range of vision. Now I want you to look up and extend your range of vision to the next serpentine extension. And you're on the wrong side of that barrel. That's fine, move over to the right, no issue. Very good. And let's square up again, one complete revolution. Shorten your range of vision. Now lengthen it as you come across. Straight, strong, you're losing that hip to the inside. Pressure with your leg on the inside hip, back behind the back cinch will help you line him out straight. Straight creates strength. Very nice. Again, extend your range of vision. Rate him straight. Start your turn. More impulsion. Easy. Very nice. 
and again around in our squared circle, a little outside rain, very nice. And let's stop him straight. Whoa, back him straight, please, Alicia. Shoulders back, squeeze your legs, elevation in the pole. Uh, get his nose out, raise your hands up lightly. Lightly, a little more, a little more. Right there, quit. Very nice. Our horses are luxuries, they're not necessities, and they don't come with warranties. And they don't even come with instructions. But it's up to the rider to take the responsibility to learn these methodical skills. The bottom line is you need them responding to leg pressure. They need to go forward, they need to go back. They need to understand that when you put a little pressure on the rein, it tells them to slow down, stop, or reverse to go right, to go left, to elevate a shoulder, or to change directions. So the whole concept is understanding pressure, requests, response, release. This complete Sharon Camarillo Bell Racing Clinic Series will soon be available for purchase in tax stores and online. The programs available on both DVD and VHS will have additional bonus footage from Sharon's Ride the West Clinic. For more information on when and where you can purchase a Sharon Camarillo series, log on to www.rainsman.com. Next week, Sharon begins a two-part series on pattern work for consistent barrel racing. So join us again next week right here on Horse TV. The Sharon Camarillo series is produced by Advent Communications. Contact us at clinictv at aol.com.